come out to this. Grab a seat. And perfect. Nice. Okay, well, I would like to introduce Arsha and Law. And I have a great story. You know, Arsha and Morgan from IBM came out and we did a nice two day workshop uh, in Denver. And I really want to thank Arsha and Morgan for doing such a wonderful job on that. And uh, we had a lot of people learn a lot about getting into hyperledger fabric and understanding really how the underlying technology works. And it couldn't have been done with a better team. So I appreciate that. Sorry. Yeah, so I'll turn it over to Arsha now. So she's going to talk a little bit about the platform. Um, so we are dealing with a little technical difficulty, so we will just see how it goes. Um, so just to introduce myself, Arshal, I'm the product manager for the IBM blockchain platform. I manage our developer portfolio as well as our multi-cloud strategy and Red Hat integration. And really passionate outside of that on um, smart contract standards, do some work for that in the UK with setting smart contract standards and enabling academics and startups outside of that. Cool, so I'm going to start off this presentation talking a little bit about um, use cases and what we're actually seeing happen. I know a lot of this um, conference, especially today, I felt was very tech happy, so I want to bring you back to the user and the people that blockchain is actually helping. Um, and then the second half, I'll go into a little bit of IBM strategy, our platform overall, and what we're doing in this space. So, blockchain is here, it's here for good, and it's already changing everyday life. Um, I'm going to share three use cases that we're seeing right now, um, blockchain in action in production today. And I'm hoping to inspire you also, if you're not already doing something, building a blockchain use case, um, to inspire you to also use this technology to tackle some of the problems that you're, you might be facing either with your business or problems you see in everyday life. Okay, so first example, has this ever happened to you? Um, you're traveling somewhere, you eat something, you don't feel so good afterwards. So in 2006, a nationwide outbreak of E. coli linked to bad spinach um, took regulators two weeks to actually conduct the trace back and determine where the exact source of outbreak is. I think everyone probably by now at this conference at least has heard this example and heard of the millions of trillions of dollars that were lost in trying to actually trace this back and ended up just you know, taking back kind of off the shelves for a little bit to compensate for that. So the Food Trust Consortium. So this is a network that's convened by IBM, some of the biggest players in the food space. Um, Walmart recently, a couple months ago, announced that anyone working with Walmart at all in the um, leafy green <laughs> The leafy green department has to be on this network in order to actually work with Walmart. So, very, very big consortium happening. And um, food trust happening today can be by IBM. Um, the purpose of it is to reduce the amount of food recalls and limit the amount of people who get sick from these bad food, uh, bad food in the supply chain. So we did an experiment um, with Walmart. Uh, we went and saw after we created the food trust network. How long would it take to trace back um, a package of sliced mangoes if you were using the Food Trust Network? So we, when we started off before the network had actually existed, it took seven days for, to find this package of sliced mangoes, and afterwards, 2.2 seconds. Mm -hmm. So this is an experiment done by IBM and Frank Ellis from Walmart. Um, he quoted that's food traceability at the speed of thought. And again, this is happening today. This isn't a dream or a vision. This is in production in the works today. So, second example. Um, have you ever filled out an application to rent an apartment? So, I'm sure if you have, you're familiar that you have to give every piece of information, whether it seems related or unrelated, um, to whoever you're renting from. And then you get hit with something like this. So, your data has been breached. Sorry about it, we're doing things to in the future to help, but yeah, that's kind of how it is. So an estimated of 15.4 million people in 2016 were hit with consumer identity theft. 
So obviously, I hope that's never happened to anyone in this room, but it's happened to a lot of people, and it's a huge problem. And we want to go and try to address that. <coughs> so today, um, we have a consortium called Verify Me. This is convened by Secure Key in Canada um, to basically address the issue of identity and, and a user actually owning all their personal information. So with one single fingerprint and this app, you take control of which information you want to release to which people and have rights to get that information back. Um, this leads to no honeypots, um, I'll keep talking, um, no honeypots, which is what we call a big grove of data. And that's often happens when you thought a lot of applications and they're all going to the same sources. And also, um, you own all your own data, which is the way it should be. So again, verify me, still happening, happening today, um, convened in Canada. Okay. <laughs> Just a show of hands, who, who's already heard of Food Trust? Consortium. All right. And verify me? Maybe not. Some Vice President of Food Safety for Walmart, and now Frank went to go work with the FDA, and I know that Frank is still a very good proponent of uh, food trust, even at the FDA level now that he's working for the federal government. So is there any initiatives that you have with the FDA now that Frank's moved on from Walmart to Food and Drug Administration? So I know we're still doing a lot in the space. Um, I'm not sure exactly with the FDA what we can and can't talk about, but definitely that that whole network um, triggered a lot in the space. A lot of people were interested. So Food Trust is definitely not the only consortium within Food Traceability that we have right here. All right. So third example. Um, have you ever? It may have been offered, or you've had a migraine on a plane, and someone's giving you a pill, and you're not actually sure what it is. Um, so that might affect us, but it definitely affects people in low and middle income countries. So, one in ten medical products circulating in low and middle income countries is either substandard or falsified, and that was found by the WHO in 2017. So we have cough syrup for children containing powerful opioids, just things that were very, very dangerous circulating around. So, um, we have something called the IBM Crypto Anchor Verifier, which takes AI, IoT, and blockchain, combines them all, and stores, um, through spectral analysis, digital images of pills on a blockchain, and can really match up um, the pill with what the actual pill should look like. And I have a little demo of this, we'll see if it works. Um, so again, through light spectral analysis, um, you can actually confirm what you're taking. And it it's, has a phone because this is actually a little device that you attach to your phone camera and scan a pill with. And I'll show a little demo if it works. So this is them scanning a pill. And that is the light spectral analysis for this pill. This is the other pill. And the second one. And again, all digital images for this are stored on a blockchain, so they can run a test to see what, which one is actually the correct build. Yeah. So we have real versus fake um, that we can tell because of those images. And again, that's preventing counterfeit, um, counterfeit pills and actually changing everyday life for people. 
So just like those three examples, we have a hundred other live production networks. And people ask oftentimes, like we say these numbers a lot at IBM, but what does that actually mean? Um, when I say production network, I mean a network that has smart contracts deployed, that is actively transacting, so we, we really look at how many transactions are being done to make sure that when we say live network, we're not just talking about someone who started something and never did anything. So these are live networks. Um, and they have member organizations, so these are people with more than one party involved. Um, and as you can see, they're across all different spaces, healthcare, payments, um, supply chain, uh, really have it across all different industries. Sorry. No, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit into what is blockchain actually. Um, and I know you've obviously been here for the last day or two, so everyone here has a pretty good understanding, but I still get questions like, you know, how does that really differ from a database? Why shouldn't I just use a, a decentralized database to do the same thing? Um, and I will preface there's a lot of depth in this part of the presentation because our graphic designer thought it would be fun to illustrate this document, of course. Um, so, while blockchains have a lot of database like features, they also have some very unique features. Um, and those three most unique features, I would say, are shared ledger, consensus, and immutability. So what is a shared ledger? Um, unlike databases that have a single administrator um, that sets up all the rules for the ledger and has control of the ledger, blockchain that has multiple administrators um, that each also have the exact copy of the ledger. So there's many people involved here. Consensus. So unlike a database where a submitted transaction is immediately recorded, there is an element of consensus within blockchain. So blockchain transactions are first proposed, then consented by the group, and then actually added to the ledger. And the last one, immutability. And this is probably, personally, I think this is the most important. So unlike a database where admins can change what's on the ledger, blockchains are append only. And when a block is committed, it's cryptographically secure um, with other blocks on the ledger to form an audit log that becomes a foundation of trust. Um, and you often hear us talking about the foundation of trust because that's the thing that, we, that blockchain brings to businesses that databases don't, is that one trust layer that can bring businesses that might usually be competitors into the same room working on something together. So, we know not all ducks are exactly alike. Um, we've had presentations um, today and yesterday, just really great presentations by R3, Consensus, um, all different um, businesses and ledgers. But obviously at IBM, we have had our bets on Hyperledger Fabric. We're the biggest contributors to Hyperledger Fabric. And that's really where we build on top of as a technology stack. And that is because we consider it the best blockchain for enterprise. Um, so enterprise blockchain, such as Hyperledger Fabric, has four key differentiators. More depths, I told you. Um, so accountability, uh, that's the first one. Network members inside, um, it's important for in an enterprise for network members to be known and identified, but also to be have to have permissions on what they can and can't see and what they can and can't do. So privacy. Although members in a consortium might be known and identified, because that's really important to a business, there is still an element of privacy because transactions are only shared with those who have a need to know and have been consented by the group to have a need to know. Scalability, so of course very important to businesses that we have to be able to operate and um, allow for a really large volume of transactions. Uh, we actually had a blog go out recently by Chris Ferris about the performance of Hyperledger Fabric and um, he shared some really good best practices and using those best practices you can get up to a thousand transactions per second using Fabric. So we really see that as important for businesses. And then the last one is security. So we want to make sure that even in the presence of bad, um, of bad actors or carelessness, um, nothing goes down. So it's fault tolerant even in the presence of anything going wrong. As I said, um, Hyperledger Fabric, uh, which we contribute to happily and powers a blockchain platform. Um, our recent platform is built on Hyperledger Fabric 1.4, which is a long-term support release. Um, that'll 
that entails that it will be supported for at least a year, um, and we're committed to fixes on that platform. So this is the most recent version, the most recent long-term support release, which is what our platform that um, we currently have is built on. And we're really glad to see that fabric in the industry has become such a standard. Um, I'm sure there's people now using it that aren't even represented here, but um, we've seen technology providers um, across here and internationally using hyperledger fabric and considering hyperledger fabric the enterprise standard for blockchain. Okay, I'm going to transition a little bit into what we mean when we say blockchain anywhere and the multi cloud strategy that you may or may not have heard of um, that has emerged in the last year for IBM. So our end-to-end -end strategy, um, our base, of course, is Hyperledger Fabric. Um, so we're a founding premier member of IBM when we first, uh, of Hyperledger. Um, when we first started developing in this space, uh, we developed open source and then decided to contribute to Fabric and created um, what is now Hyperledger Fabric. On top of that, we built the IBM blockchain platform. Um, so the platform has things that we feel like companies need that are beyond just the open source Hyperledger, so that's things like operational tools, development tools, security support, um, and we feel like that's really, really important to help businesses get started and scale with Fabric. Um, um, and then solutions. So these are our verticals. You'll hear food trust, um, trade lens. These are our vertical industry solutions. And if you are coming from a particular industry, you're not trying to build out your own solution on your own, you want to join someone, we also help you integrate with those existing solutions. The third is ecosystem. So we have a very diverse array of partnerships, um, either people in the tooling space, people in the services space, that we engage with to help us scale out what we currently offer. And then all across that is our services. So we have the IBM Garage, which helps you with design thinking, figuring out what your blockchain use case is, architecture goals, um, our global businesses services, which are our consulting arm that actually helps you integrate blockchain with your existing infrastructure. So services are a very key part of how we implement blockchain within existing businesses. And a little bit about the actual platform. Um, as I started uh, this section with, Blockchain Anywhere is our main messaging. Um, at the beginning of this year, we really did a lot of work and realized that um, cloud and where you want to deploy your infrastructure should never be a barrier to being part of a network because that would take away the decentralized point of blockchain. So we wanted to make sure we were bringing down the barriers if um, you know company A needs to run on AWS, company B needs to run on Azure, company C needs to run on-prem, but they want to work together, they should be able to. So. Recently, last week, or two weeks ago, um, we released this version of the platform. Um, we have our advanced tooling, which is our ability to create and manage smart contracts, applications, um, management of networks through our UI. And then in the middle, we orchestrate multi-cloud deployments through Red Hat OpenShift. So through OpenShift, you can deploy any part of your network anywhere that OpenShift runs. That means you can have up here in a different part, you can have your whole network in a different cloud, um, just completely hybrid deployments using OpenShift. Um, and of course, that also works um, with Kubernetes. That's a, that's a very big part of our infrastructure. And then uh, our open technology stack. So using Hyperledger Fabric, containers, Kubernetes, we allow all of this to happen and work within the platform. This was um, a picture from our Think conference, which is our proprietary conference in um, May of this year. So this is when our IB, our IB blockchain platform CTO worked with um, Microsoft to show how you could have a network running across Azure and the IBM cloud together. So really, again, that focus on hybrid cloud deployments because that's really what the nature of blockchain needs to support. And then lastly, lastly is our IBM Blockchain Anywhere offerings. Um, we offer blockchain support, so we're the only vendor who provides support for open source Hyperledger Fabric if you still want to run it open source and then just get that support from IBM. Self-managed, so this is um, our full features, full featured blockchain platform um, running on the infrastructure of your choice with you managing all parts of it. Or IBM Managed, so this is our fully and that is it for me.
Um, thank you so much, and let me know if you have any questions. Questions for Arsha? I guess the first question I have is on the pill scanner, is that something that you can get for iOS or is that, uh, what's, what's the availability of that pill scanner? I believe they tried on iOS. It was incubated by our research arm, so I think they're still figuring out the go-to-market. Okay, good. Yep, Erica. Okay, I think I asked you this yesterday, but with the pill scanner, it's using AI to scan the shape of the pill and determine if it's counterfeit, uh, is that correct? It's not actually looking at the ingredients. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it's it's the shape, it's the texture, I'm not in that field, so I don't yeah, totally know. I know it's something to do with like how the light hits it and refracts off of it. And, and are you using Watson like that? Or yes, I believe like it's Watson. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. So, so on that, each of the different chemical components have yeah, a certain like reflection light, light wave. So that's the spectroscopy part, so that's each ingredient yeah. would have a, it will show up on, on that light spectroscopy. And then from there, you can determine like what's in there that should be there or not. Okay, how about uh, you put up there, you had a one year support for Hyperledger Fabric 1.4 LTS. So, so that's not IBM, yeah. that's just fabric. Yeah, just fabric in general from Hyperledger. Mm -hmm. um, you know when the start date and cutoff date is for that uh, one year support or? Is it something? Came out in July. July. So pretty much that I have full support all the way through July yeah. 2020. About. I'd have to look at it and remember again exactly what I'm doing now. But yeah. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, Arsha. Well, great job. Thank you very much for coming out. I love you. Okay, we're going to take a few minute break here, so if you need to get some coffee or tea or refreshment, go do it, and then uh, we're going to come back in here, and we're going to have a great uh, blockchain innovation panel, I saw Rob, right here, and uh, we're going to have Paul, Jonathan, and Howard from Hitachi.